Be sure to check out my new artwork, The Initiation. Just click the picture and it'll take you right to my shop. So I'm going to do some chest back and biceps today and I've decided to work heavy. Uh, I've decided to go to some heavy sets. So what the difference is between a lighter day or a heavier day is that uh, the way I warm up will change slightly. Okay, so if I want to work with heavier weight, I'm not looking at taxing my energy. Okay, I'm not, I'm not looking at getting that deep burn and burning out and going to failure there. What I'm looking at doing is getting the motion down, getting the groove down in my warm-ups, and getting enough blood in the joints and in the muscles to make sure they're safe. And then I'm looking to conserve as much energy as I can to really explode through that heavier weight. Now that's not the only way to train, but that's the way to train if you want to uh, pyramid. Okay, they call it pyramiding when you want to pyramid up in weight. So progressive overload, I guess, is another word that's thrown around. It's about me just getting enough warm up in so that I have optimal energy to push that extreme heavy set and really challenge my fast twitch fibers, really challenge the power fibers and the nervous system. Okay, so I don't want my energy to become the weak link. So as you're seeing that I'm, you know, running back and forth here and I'm just, uh, you know, just doing a few sets of, of 10 reps, five reps, 15 reps, whatever it is, but I'm not going to absolute failure. And there's a reason for that. It's just, I want to conserve all my energy. Okay. So this is a big teaching here for some of you guys that might be beginners or some of you that are uh, used to working out and and burning yourself out long before uh, you get to your heavier sets and uh, like I said I talked to one guy and that was one of those problems uh, another way not to burn yourself out is to do what I'm doing right here and I'm just showing you <laughs> it's like you know that's what I love about gyms always go to a gym where you can actually move the bench around otherwise you'll get stuck doing this all the time just moving back and forth with dumbbells you know and you'll use up all your energy just running around the gym right so <laughs> it's that's what I like about heavy. I can actually move the bench around. So as you notice, I have it in front of the heavier dumbbells because once the dumbbells get heavier, you definitely don't want to be walking across the room with, uh, you know, 120s or 130s in your hands, right? So yeah, I'm moving up here. Uh, I'm at a 125s or so or 120s in this gym. Other gyms are called 125s because they include the, the bar actually is five pounds or whatever. Uh, but yeah, and so I'm just getting a few reps in here and basically making sure I'm nice and warm. And then I'm going to go up one more, right? So I probably did a little bit more reps on here than I probably should have, but I just thought, hey, I just want to make sure I'm good and warm. Okay, and uh, and here we go. Here's the 130. So I'm only going to get a few reps on this, but the point is, is that I'm getting my body used to handling the heavier weight. That's really what it's about. It's not about uh, being able to do the perfect form or the perfect weight all the time. It's about just challenging your nervous system and challenging it to do something that it's not used to, and then it forces it to adapt, right? So I just go for, you know, a few reps here and that that's good enough. Three reps is good enough. And that's basically going to, you know, hit some muscle fibers that I wouldn't have gotten if I just would have stuck with the 120s, right? So again, I don't do that all the time. I don't recommend that you do that all the time, but once in a while, it's a good way to shock things up, right? And then I go right back down to 110s again, and now I start repping out, okay? So as you can see, it's it's a, it's one way to structure your workout when you're trying to put on strength, and then you want to just burn out the muscles after and get some muscle mass along with it, right? It's just the bodybuilding, the whole point is to hit as many different muscle groups as you can and, and hit as many different muscle fibers as you can. And ultimately, the fast twitch fibers sometimes don't get challenged when you're repping out. You don't get the same type of uh, fast twitch sort of development unless you're doing super fast reps and, and things. But ultimately, if you really want to get that deep trauma in the muscle, sometimes it, it requires heavier weight, right? So, yeah, a combination of that. Power building is how Michael Hearn would call it or whatever. But, uh, you know, it's, it's not really rocket science. It's been, this is the way training has always worked, you know. So, yeah. So here I'm going to do some bent over rows, 225. And the reason why I use 225 a lot of times is because my poor little pansy grip uh, seems to break on me when I go to 275 or higher. So, and I, and I just don't use wrist straps that often. Once in a while I'll use them. So if I get in a heavier weight to keep the bar from rolling out of my hands, I have to use some wrist straps sometimes and really challenge the back. But, but you know, I, I always want to work my grip as mu much as I can as well. So that's why I don't use wrist straps a lot, but the odd time I, I don't want them to become the weak link either. So here's, you know, my uh, douchebag moment, right? So people can see, you know, my back development, right? Because all the time I'm covered up in t-shirts and I don't have any good tank tough. So, 
uh, basically this is uh, you know so you can kind of see like I'm retracting the shoulder blades right that's the most important part of training back a lot of people get focused on how high up the bar comes but it's more about retracting the shoulder blades you know retracting those shoulders just bringing them back that that really helps work those rhomboids and then when you bring the elbows up you'd be surprised that your elbows have to come up to a certain point to hit lats but after that it's it, most people what they end up doing is rounding their upper back and then ironically they take their back out of the movement by trying to get the bar up higher so my point is when i'm doing better rows i'm trying to work the back and keep the tension on the back not transfer it over to something else you know that's the thing with uh, a lot of people on the internet they're they're kind of confused with CrossFit powerlifting. They're confused with everything, and they're trying to say, "Okay, well, this is a movement, and uh, this movement can only be done a certain way." Well, the reason why movements are done a certain way in different sports is because there's different purposes in mind, right? So, say you know I was in a sport where they're saying the bent over row competition. Well, maybe I'd have to touch the floor with the bar and come all the way up. It doesn't matter what muscle groups I'm hitting. The point is, is that they want the movement to be done a certain way. So. Uh, but I'm doing the movement now for bodybuilding. So here you can see I'm bringing the bar that's as far forward as it goes unless I want to actually lean forward or bend over more. Okay, so a lot of people on the seated row, they start to uh, do the, the seated row like they're in a boat. Okay, they start to lean forward. Now the difference is when, when you're in a boat or when you're on a machine is that when you lean forward on the machine, if your lower back starts to round, uh, there'll be a lot of tension put on the ligaments and tendons. Whereas when you lean forward in a boat, there's no weight pulling you, you know, there's no weight pulling you forward. So there's nothing to tweak your ligaments in your back or your discs. So you don't have to be quite as careful in a boat, right? You don't have to be careful at all. You just, you can round your back as much as you can, stretch all the way forward and then pull the oars and then uh, row the boat. So on seated row, I've seen some people do this. And if you can keep your back arched or flat, I'd say no problem. Uh, but ultimately I'm doing this because I'm feeling just a certain part of my back and I'm trying to keep the tension on there. I'm, I don't want to transfer it to my biceps by coming forward more. I don't want to transfer it uh, to my lower back. I want my lats and my rhomboids and my traps to die. I want them to basically hit fatigue first. So uh, this is why I do this movement so isolated, okay? So ultimately you can find out which part of your body you want to isolate and then you cater the movement to that. that that's what you stick to. So I went from there to uh, some incline curls and I'm going to go and do some heavier sets today as well with incline curls and you know of course the, the form starts to look ugly you know once you go heavier but ultimately that's that's what grew biceps like I got my biceps to over 18 and a half inches that way and ultimately it's it, again it, the same principles apply you know you do your strict form days and you do your higher rep days and then you do your uh, balls out days I guess you could call it where you just you know try to get that weight up you know the most important thing is to make sure you're not straining uh, something everything feels good as far as your muscles and everything feel good you're not gonna tear or pull anything funny uh, but ultimately you do want to challenge the movement from time to time and uh, doing this once in a while you know uh, say you do super heavy weight you do it once in a while that's actually a really great way to grow and, and then what happens is that on your higher rep days, uh, it, you help pump blood in that area and recover from the heavier days, you see? So it's kind of one accentuates the other. So there's a, like a, a synergistic effect, I guess you could say. There's a synergistic effect between doing the higher reps and the lower rep days, you know, where there's more straining and stuff involved. And so I, I find that combining the two uh, is really more effective in growing muscle mass. Uh, rather than just sticking to one uh, or another. This is why when you're open-minded, actually you make much uh, bigger results. Most of the people that actually are negative on this channel, uh, they're usually beginners or they're people that actually look like uh, they haven't actually really trained, you know? Uh, most of the advanced guys that I actually find uh, that watch this channel or the advanced people that I meet in the gym, they're extremely open-minded when it comes down to training techniques uh, because they know there's so many different ways to uh, hit the muscle and so many different ways to grow. And for each person, and there'll be a specific uh, type of training regime that seems to work best for them at that time. Uh, but as you become more advanced, you start to realize that those regimes change as well for you. So you almost become a hypocrite. Like one day, you know, one type of training is working and then the next, you know, couple months later or maybe a year later, then some other type of training seems to work best for you. So that's why, you know, I always talk about and I always encourage you to listen to your body as you go because sometimes the things that worked for you before uh, won't uh, work for you anymore. 
I had one interesting comment from one gentleman on here, and uh, he said that the HIT training was the best thing he ever did in his life. You know, uh, he said it just gained so much muscle for him, and he just was so much better. But then years later, he said it just didn't work for him anymore, and then he had to change his training program. So, like I said, there's no such thing as a perfect training program. There's only the such thing as the perfect training program for you right now, you know. Uh, so, anyway, I'm finishing this workout off with uh, some lower back extensions. So, as you can notice, like, the nice part about the ball is that you can actually round the back without any sort of risk of hurting the back at all. You know, that's the whole point of the ball. You know, there's no... Uh, you know, your, your ligaments aren't being levered up, levered apart, you know, like sometimes when you lean over or you bend over with weight, uh, your ligaments have so much tension on them, but on the ball, it's like you're totally supported. So as you can see, I'm rounding the lower back and then arching the back to get that muscle uh, strong. So that way when I fire the hamstrings, when I squat or when I deadlift or do anything like that, uh, what will happen is that the lower back will continue to fire. Right. So this is a great exercise for you to try on your own. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching and make sure you subscribe or share my stuff if you like what I have to say and uh, happy training. Take care for now. Do it your way. Now you know my name, calling me in a drought. I came to Ridge in 215 and sorted it all out.